everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Zach. Here we talk about overlanding, gear, builds, DIY, all sorts of stuff related to modifying your vehicle. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about some stuff I'm doing to the Land Cruiser. And I just kinda wanna get a poll from you all. So uh, the last couple of videos I've posted have been more related to the Land Cruiser. I've got some cool project ideas for the Forerunner, but I'm trying to figure out what the sense of interest is. So hopefully this video does well and most of you are clicking on it so you can see this. But comment down below if you like the Land Cruiser content. Do you think I'm getting too in depth on these videos? Do you think that uh, there are certain types of videos you would rather see? Uh, lots of people on YouTube post, you know, videos talking about kind of, you know, the five tools they like to carry or the five pieces of camping gear they can't live without, these sort of videos. Uh, and while I think they're helpful, uh, they seem to not really get into the depth. They're more of a breadth versus depth kind of video. And I'm happy to make those and I probably will make some of them because I think they're helpful and I think people wanna know potentially my outlook on some of those lists. Um, but I try to make some of these videos a little bit more in depth because I think people can draw inspiration from them and it maybe helps you gain ideas on how to do your own build. Um, so comment down below if you're liking the Land Cruiser content. I feel like there's a select few people that really enjoy the Land Cruiser content and they're commenting hard. And uh, I just wanna make sure that all the people who follow me for Forerunner content aren't sort of getting lost in the Land Cruiser content and not really enjoying it. So I wanna make sure that I'm making content that you all enjoy and not just some small subpopulation. But while I really like my Forerunner build, I feel like the Land Cruiser build is just, it's in a different category and I think it's really cool. So uh, I'm going to continue to make more content on it, but I may make one video that hits a couple topics rather than each individual and going really in depth because maybe there's only a few of you out there that are really enjoying it at that level. So comment down below so I can get kind of a, a pulse for what people are thinking. But I think this video is pretty cool. So what I basically did was uh, they make a couple of cool brackets for Switch Pros for the Land Cruisers. Uh, there's a company like Delta Vehicle Systems. They make like this proprietary bracket for mounting your Switch Pros. It looks pretty nice, but also I didn't really know how to work that in uh, exactly how I liked. And then I also knew that uh, Wits End made this cool little adapter bracket for the uh, sort of center console area when you're trying to mount up the switch control panel. So these two things sort of got me thinking, okay, well maybe a Switch Pros would be a good thing to put in the Land Cruiser. And fast forward, and I decided to get a Switch Pros to mount in there, but I went about it a slightly different way and I retrofitted some Forerunner parts in the Land Cruiser to do this. So. Uh, this video kind of hits on a bunch of different things. So first of all, if you mount your Switch Pros on the left side, uh, there's a decent chance you might want to run it off a dual battery. If you're in the US, you may have not had a Land Cruiser with a dual battery setup. However, from the factory, I think you could option a dual battery system, or maybe it was like an aftermarket add-on. I don't know, but they have OEM parts to outfit a dual battery system. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be relocating the washer fluid reservoir we're going to be relocating a little bit of wiring. We're going to be installing a dual battery bracket. We're gonna be installing a full throttle dual battery. We're gonna be installing some SDHQ battery terminals because they are absolutely awesome. I'm gonna be making a bunch of cables to you know, connect everything up and we're gonna be retrofitting some Forerunner stuff to get the Switch Pros mounted up and in my opinion, one of the best spots in the engine bay so we can preserve space elsewhere for some other things. So I think this is a pretty cool video. It's a nice mixture of parts that come off the shelf and also a little bit of DIY sort of uh, custom design work. I think it's pretty cool. So stick around for the video and kind of check out everything that I did. So with that being said, I'm going to showcase all of those things as well as kind of hooking up the Switch Pros and getting it mounted up in the vehicle, running the trigger wires, all those sorts of things. So hopefully this is an interesting one for you all. Let's first jump into the relocation, then the dual battery, and then the Switch Pros. All right, let's do it.
So this kit's pretty awesome because they actually divide everything up into the steps uh, for the hardware that you actually need. So it's not too hard to follow along the instructions because they literally put it in separate pouches for each one. So what I'm going to do is the method that they talk about of mounting it in the lower holes. So what we're going to do here is this is the bracket. These are the lower holes. And we're going to grab it here and figure out exactly how to do this. So, All right, so the bolt goes on the back side. Put on the washer or nylon spacer. Then we put a washer. Then we put the nylon locking nut next to the washer. Then similarly, we'll grab this, have the bolt go through the lower hole, through the plastic washer, and then nylon locking nut. Then this lower portion, push the bolt through, spacer comes all the way through, and then nylon locking nut. Just like that. It says that I have to notch something, but I'm not sure what notching it's talking about. All right, so we got the bolt now in the correct spot. Now we have to drill this out so we can put a screw through this plastic tab here. All right, so that should be kind of drilled out now in case we uh, are putting a bolt through there, which I think we are gonna bolt this to something in the vehicle. So now that's opened up and ready to go. All right, so we've got these bolts in it says to not over tighten due to the plastic uh, tabs on the tank, but obviously we're going to crank these down just so that they don't, you know, wobble around. So I believe this hardware is 7 16 So there. Just going to kind of give it one, one wrap with the screw gun and that should be good enough. These are nylon locking nuts so they're not going to come loose with vibrations or anything. Alright. This is not quite as That seems pretty good there. Now, uh, now we've got to bolt it up. I think we can just mount this bracket inside the vehicle. All right, so on this here, you want to pull this tab back to pop it off. We're going to remove this little bracket right here. And all this is going to be replaced, so we don't really need to keep it. All right, so here's the little bolt, here's the bracket. Got that removed. It says prepare firewall for bracket. There are three more bolts to remove, notated with the arrows. So we're gonna remove this bolt, this bolt, and this one right up here. All right, let's remove these bolts now. Don't want to lose those, we're going to reuse them. And that one over there is a 12. Grab our 12 here. All right, so this we're going to put into this factory hole. I put a little anti-seize on it. You put the bolt in, but you're going to have a washer and a spacer on beforehand. So it's like the head of the bolt and then the washer and then the spacer. But between the spacer that's here and the washer that's here, we're going to slide the bracket in between. So that's what we're doing here. Just thread it in enough so that it's catching. And then we can hook that bracket on there. So, all right, that bolt's in. Now I think we got to go grab the actual bracket and start mounting it up.
All right, so we've got this harness here that we need to extend. Okay, so now we just need to strip back a bit of this here. These are 14 gauge. This larger piece of heat shrink to hold on the other side of the black protective harness. So I'm gonna just slide that on there like that. Slide that in and crimp. In a perfect world, I'd have a ratcheting crimpers so that I knew how much I was crimping. So that gives you an even crimp. But I haven't bought them yet. Got that crimped, now we gotta hit it with heat. And last but not least, we're gonna use the last bolt that's supplied with a lock washer to secure this little bracket that held on the diagnosis port here, which I think is just an OBD2 port, but uh, there's a little bracket that we took off earlier. We're gonna use that here, and I just kind of angled it out just like this, below the cap. We should be sitting perfect, so. Got a little extra hardware here that we can set aside and keep for uh, a rainy day. Hey everybody. Okay, so I'm gonna start doing my Switch Pros install here. I've got the fuse cap off, but I think a lot of the ADA fuses we're gonna do inside the vehicle. Uh, we've got two full throttle batteries here, a group 24 for the OEM starter, and then a group 35 here for the dual. Um, so if you have uh, 80 series, maybe your vehicle comes with the dual battery kit otherwise i had to get this from delta vehicle systems and it includes relocating your washer tank sort of jug back here so the thing that i've been working on though is actually retrofitting this forerunner power trays bracket to use in here and it's taking a little bit of ingenuity but the reason that i want to do this is there's a fair amount of space over here and Delta Vehicle Systems sells a bracket in here to mount some more stuff. And I think their Switch Pros bracket goes like up here, which is fairly convenient, but you have to run long power cables over here to actually get it to the second battery. And so I just figured it seems more convenient to put it on this side and I'll maybe leave that space over there open for something else in the future, maybe a safety hub. So. All this is sort of laid out. I made these little brackets, so they will go right onto here and hold the actual Switch Pros. The tricky part with setting all this up is basically the gas struts get in the way, so this big gas strut has to fold down, which is why I've sort of relocated the ground bar. So as you can see, I just used like a piece of, I think, quarter inch aluminum. I bent it and created a little space to mount it to, and then there's a gap in between the jug and the grounding bar, so I can put all the ground cables through there, keep them away from this gas strut. So everything's pretty good to go. I've got to run the trigger wires in under the dash and the switch controller in under the dash. Uh, I'm going to be using the wits end bracket for the ashtray. And yeah, shouldn't take too much to get it all mounted up, but just wanted to show kind of what we're working with here. So, all right, let's keep moving. All right, so I've got this wits end bracket all mocked up here. Just gotta route the wire for it. And then in the engine bay, it's pretty sweet. They've got these little like, I don't know, it's like a nipple or something you can cut off and just route a wire through that big grommet. So cut one of those off so I can route the trigger wire and these, the actual switch panel wire through there. So now we just gotta route that. All right, well, the classic question is which tapped fuses did I use? I used the tail fuse and the ignition fuse. We've got those right here. It's the 7.5, 7.5 and 15 amps. So you just add in the original fuse along with your add a circuit fuse, which for these to be trigger wires, it can be very small. So. Those both look good, I've routed them. There's a cavity way in the back that's pretty nice for running the wires. So I ran that through there. And then I got the Switch Pro mounted up with the bracket. Uh, there's some space in the plastic over here to route the wire. So I used my snake, ran the snake down there to pull the wire up through. Um, I started in the engine bay and came this way because the plug for this side of the Switch Pro is way 
more grommet in the firewall friendly than the other side. So routed that through kind of down over there and over here. As you can see, I took that side panel off. It's just clips in the doorway along with like this plastic nut that you can just twist out almost by hand in the corner there. So got that all removed, but all this should be basically routed. That pink wire, I'm going to try and run into this door to be a trigger when the light in the like puddle turns on, then that trigger will turn on. So hopefully I can trigger rock lights off of that. So that's the plan. So I've got the three trigger wires ran through and the controller wire. Now I just gotta get it all set up in the engine bay. All right, hopefully the wind isn't too loud here, but I got the all the trigger wires ran through the grommet there, right alongside here nicely. I've got all of them tied into this harness. We've got our power ran behind this little bracket here for the fuse box. Got the ground hooked up here for the switch pros. I've got my little right angle fabricated brackets here. And then I've got another one snuck right underneath there. You can kind of see. So hopefully the nut that will come up on the top will be hidden underneath here so the gas strut can lay right down over the top of it. So time to get it bolted up and uh, push down in there. Oh, and I've got my positive cable sitting there as well. Yeah, we'll push it down in there and see how it mounts up. All right, well, I got it mounted up and wow, that was kind of brutal getting the Allen key underneath there to tighten those bolts. Uh, but with the stainless steel Allen head bolts, these, uh, these worked okay. They're 1024 by 5 eighths inch, so if you're trying to mimic what I'm doing here, that's the hardware I used. Uh, but yeah, so at least all bolted up and connected together. If I connect up everything, it should be all ready to go. So I guess we'll keep on firing up stuff on the vehicle here and connect it to the battery. So we got the cables all routed through there and good to go. I probably should have jacketed that pink wire, but... I don't know, I'm torn. It's just, it's zip tied in there and it really shouldn't rub on anything. So I'm not too worried, but uh, you know, maybe the, the recommendation from the manufacturer would be to change it, but I'm not really sure. So figure that one out on your own. Um, that's how I did it for now. I did jacket it once it got in the door so that if it was rubbing on anything in this door panel, it would be fine. So. I've ran this up to this blue wire, which I checked to have basically power when the door is open for the puddle light. I'm gonna use this as a trigger for scene lights and maybe rock lights on the Land Cruiser. So should work out pretty sweet. All right, so here, Got some of the lights working here. Let's see. So the DRLs work. Got some of the switches hooked up. Let's show you just kind of what it's looking like so far. So I've got the dual battery, full throttle battery here hooked up. I don't run these lights really, but it's at least hooked up for when I get this battery connected to the starter. I'm still waiting on an isolator system. Uh, but we've got the HD or sorry, these are just the standard, I think, uh, SDHQ terminals. I'll link them down below. I've got two fuses here, a 125 for the Switch Pros and a 100 for the fuse panel. And then we've got the Switch Panel, the Switch Pros mounted up. Our eight screw connections here for the eight switches. And then the grounding bar back there. And you can see space there, nothing rattles. Space right in there, nothing rattles. And this is all bent down so that the gas strut doesn't hit it. So yeah, this install turned out really clean and I've got a lot of other stuff wired up. Oh, and I was also able to mount my Harbor Freight Badlands winch controller right here, which turned out awesome. We've got the wired connection and the switch right there. And then uh, clean this all up nice with my Hercules angle grinder. 
got that all sorted so that this could be mounted up up inside of here so because right now with the grill the way that it is the winch uh, control box couldn't stay on top so yeah and if you haven't seen my video i'll link it above this is the descent front bumper without the triple hoops but yeah this also works really well this is a flush mounted ss3 and we just mounted it behind the plate i think it looks great but yeah all these fog lights are wired up winch is wired up dual battery is all set up mounted clamped down we've got power here running to these two we'll just have to run power into the cabin and set up the whole dual battery system and probably even a house battery system still deciding on that but shout out to full throttle they've uh, become a sponsor of the channel since blaze off-road sponsored me a battery and it's awesome i've got a starter and a dual battery for both vehicles from full throttle so huge supporters and i'll talk more about them in some future videos so hopefully you found that video helpful i've got a fair number more of electrical system videos to do uh, the back of the Land Cruiser is going to be getting a bit of a, you know, interior redesign sort of setup. So that's going to have its own electrical system. We're going to have like a dual battery system for sure. And also potentially, you know, a couple other electrical things. Uh, the Land Cruiser just doesn't come with a lot from the factory. And I'm trying to modernize it in a stylistic way that retains some of that retro look. So we've got a couple cool videos still coming but this is sort of the one to begin many others. So uh, I also didn't address at all, but I need to connect all of the electrical still from my roof rack. So the big SS5 light bar, I have chase lights, a bunch of these other things. Uh, there's no real great way to connect those to the Switch Pro system right now. So I have a plan for how to do this. That's gonna be in a future video. So stay tuned, that'll be coming soon, um, but yeah. A lot is going to be happening with the electrical systems. One thing I will throw out there is if you're not comfortable with doing electrical system work, I really heavily recommend you look into a good electrical system installer. They're kind of few and far between. There's a lot of companies that may cut corners or use uh, just off the shelf products that maybe don't have the perfect clean look. So if you're looking for some of those really clean electrical installers, Blaze Off-Road is definitely the first that comes to my mind, but there's a couple others around the country. Definitely, definitely, if you're going to be putting in a pretty serious electrical system to look into some of these guys' shops for having them do the work, otherwise go on their stores because they sell a lot of turnkey things. If you're gonna go to Diode Dynamics website and buy all their lights, but then also do their harness add-ons, heavily consider buying your harnesses straight from Blaze Off-Road rather than buying them from uh, one of those third-party places because uh, Diode actually has some custom harnesses that are quite nice But then they also have some others that are just like off-the-shelf sort of basic harnesses And it's it would be much better to just buy a custom length perfectly designed harness That's of really high quality USA made materials rather than just something that gets slapped in the packaging with the rest of the stuff so I'd heavily consider you go check that out uh, the SDHQ terminals also uh, blaze off-road carries those that's where I bought mine. And yeah, the SDHQ terminals really are awesome for connecting really massive cables to battery terminals. The OEM ones are typically not very good and this allows for tons of extra accessories to be easily bracketed onto your battery terminals. So hopefully this was helpful information. I just kind of supply all this to show you what I'm working on. If you don't feel like you're comfortable or you haven't done the research to be able to do these things yourself, Electrical systems are no joke, so you wanna make sure that you spec them out correctly for all the accessories you're using and make sure to rate everything appropriately, whether that's picking the correct size fuses, whether that's the correct size gauge of wire because however long of a wire you run and the power you're trying to run through it will determine what size gauge wire you use. There's all these sorts of things that you need to spec out. While there are a lot of great tools and resources on the internet to do this, if you still don't feel comfortable after doing all your research, definitely look into some of these professional installers like Blaze Off-Road because they do insane work and it'll just turn out for the better that you don't have any sort of electrical fire problems or just things that are risky that you don't want to have ruin your trip. So check them out. And hopefully this video was inspiring, 
kind of exciting and gave you some ideas for some products to check out on the market. Alrighty, with that being said, I will catch you all in the next video.